to Super Bowl 54. San Francisco going to the Super Bowl. Well, tonight just may be the biggest night in U.S. sports. The Kansas City Chiefs and San Francisco 49ers, they will play in Super Bowl 54. An approximate 100 million people in the United States alone are expected to be tuning in for the big game. So many eyes will be on the Super Bowl tonight, but as they watch, they will also see an ad from the league itself. It's been playing during the playoffs and features retired football player Anquan Bolden speaking about the day his cousin was killed by plainclothes police officers. Take a look. Yeah, I'll never forget that night. I was still playing with the 49ers and my wife walks up after the game. They told me that my cousin Corey had been killed. Corey broke down on the side of the road and a plainclothes police officer pulled up. Then this guy starts screaming. All you hear from there is three shots. Now that ad is part of the NFL's Inspire Change campaign that sheds a light on police violence and racial oppression. And for his thoughts, we're now joined by Howard Bryant. He is a senior writer for ESPN The Magazine, also a correspondent for NPR's Weekend Edition, and the author of Full Dissidence, Notes from an Uneven Playing Field. Howard Bryant joining us right now from Northampton in Massachusetts. So Howard, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. Listen, I want to get your thoughts on this, because when you see an ad like that, the NFL launching an ad like that, does that encourage you about the league or does that make you cynical about its intentions? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. It makes me cynical about the intention simply because I think that the NFL and to some extent the players, they want to have it both ways. I think it's always important to bring some of these or these extremely important issues to the forefront. And when you have a platform of 100 million people, that this is a powerful, powerful ad. The problem with it is, of course, is that what they're doing in the in the exposition of the ad, they're not necessarily practicing in 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 real life. And of course, we're talking about Colin Kaepernick, so it's very difficult to to have it both ways. It's difficult to talk about these issues of injustice while at the same time systematically blackballing somebody who stood against injustice. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting to say that because there's a there's an article in the Washington Post. It was from Samar uh, Khalif, who essentially says the league is using this ad as if presenting this issue as one as one uh, that they are bringing to light without acknowledging that it was Colin Kaepernick that did so. Uh, so can the league truly be an agent of equality without resolving its treatment of Colin Kaepernick? I don't I don't think that it can and I don't think that it can and I don't think that it's it's players necessarily can because if you're going to talk about these issues, then I think you have to talk about them with a certain level of authenticity. And if you're not walking that walk, if you're not practicing it, then what's the true message? The true message is when we're actually going to do something beyond a scripted commercial, we're not willing to potentially offend our fan base. And I think this is this difficulty that the NFL has, and I think all sports have, this idea of whether or not you can have a political element to your sports coverage when you say that you don't but at the same time you are supporting militarism and you're supporting the police and you're supporting all of these other elements there just becomes a collision that doesn't track in real life unless you're willing to commit to everything unless you're willing to say look this is part of our business model this is part of our society these players are citizens and we're going to have to live with a little bit of dissent in our country because that's what it's all about. As you know, San Francisco is in tonight's game. The last time they were in the Super Bowl, Kaepernick led the charge. But there's been no acknowledgement of that. In fact, the president of the NFL Players Association says that the league is trying to erase him. Do you agree with that? Well, I agree with it simply because they haven't mentioned him. And I think that when you're looking at your business partners, these, these things aren't accidents. They're not done. It's not a simple omission. Everybody knows the last, last time the 49ers were in the Super Bowl. Everybody knows who the quarterback was. It's not like it's a, it's a big secret or you have to go back 50, 75 years to, to think about, oh, who was the quarterback. It happened in 2013. So when this happens, and also let's not forget that just two months ago, two and a half months ago, the NFL and Colin Kaepernick had that disastrous weekend in Atlanta with the tryout. So there's bad blood there. There's no diplomacy there. And if you really want to solve these issues, if you want to be committed and you want to be taken seriously, then these sides have to sit down. The NFL has to be more professional about it. They have to be more grown up and more committed to it 
because that's the only way, that's the only road to authenticity. You cannot fool the public, especially on a subject like this. And let's not forget Colin Kaepernick, uh, when he took the knee, it was to raise the issue of the injustices that uh, black people face in the United States, the violence that they face at the hands of uh, certain police officers. And yet we also see now the involvement of someone like Jay-Z with the league. What do you make of that? Well, what I make of it, once again, is trying to have it both ways. And I feel like, once again, this is one of the areas where, whether we're talking about Jay-Z or whether we're talking about the players' coalition who is involved with this, their ideas on this on the surface are admirable in a lot of ways. And they talk about results in these different things. However, the big problem with all of this is, is that you don't need the NFL owners to be these agents of change that they say they want to be. And that's where the conversation breaks down. That's where people begin to question your authenticity and call you hypocrites because the NFL owners haven't done anything but been more obstruct obstructive. They've been more anti-black in so many ways since Colin Kaepernick. And so the question is, why do you feel the need to ally yourself with a hostile element. And as long as that doesn't get resolved, as long as that is an unresolved element to this, people aren't going to believe you. It just does not track. Except for the fact that there's hundreds of millions of dollars at stake here for Jay-Z and, and the Players Coalition. Uh, very quickly, only 15 seconds left, Howard. Are you watching the game tonight? Will you be watching? Well, as a professional, I have to take a look because it's my job, but um, I'm not a fan of any of this, no. Howard Bryant. Thank you.